So tell me, why do you think, as humans, we struggle to train the mind, but we're quite happy to go and physically work out, but we have this resistance <laughs> to train this, but that's the difference between the top 15 and everybody else. So yeah, let's just start deep right away. <laughs> <laughs> like spice just, to yeah, we're not easing into this at all. Um, so you know, it's it's really it's really important um, because there's there's three things according to Michael Gervais. He's a sports psychologist that I follow, and I really uh, can identify with the things that he teaches. And he says there's three things that we can train: our craft, which is barrel racing, cutting, you know, roping, whatever. Um, our craft, our body and our mind. And the mind though, while we all understand that it's really important, there's um, maybe a little bit of, of uncertainty in how to train it. You know, you can, you can read books that will tell you you need to be able to focus, who cares what anybody thinks, you know, and things like that. But it maybe isn't clear in how you actually train it. So, um, you know, I think that there's there's a lot of well-intentioned people that are trying to learn, but there's not there, there's less resources where you can actually go to, to learn how to train it. And so um, that's one of the things that I love doing is talking to people and deciding, you know, like we know how to train horses and there's very specific steps you can do. The process. Yeah, the yeah. process. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And uh, that's just why I really enjoy... Um, uh, you know, working with people to do that because there is there are very specific things that we can, and very specific ways to train it, and things that we can do, and they build off of each other, and um, it just it really does make a difference because, like you said, when you get to a top level, everybody's really skilled. They've trained their body and they've trained their craft, and um, it's how well do you handle stress and pressure. Mm -hmm and um, how resilient are you in the face of defeat, which for most of us, we lose way more than we win, and that's for the people that are successful. Yeah, well you do say in your book that physical skill and talent only get you so far. Yeah. And, and, and that's the difference. Yeah. Uh, when you st people that understand the mind. Stevie, when did you start becoming aware of the power of controlling the mind? Honestly, when I met Ty, I mean, he was kind of in the middle of wanting to, learning so much and in the middle of taking some courses and reading books and um, I was starting a rodeo and running barrels and so I really didn't know much about it or I didn't know how important it was. I knew about it, but I, I really, looking back now, I knew nothing. Um, but hearing him talk and it was really cool because when he was stepping into it, his passion, it was new for me. So, I mean, we could bounce things off each other. He was learning. So he could talk all day long to me about this. And it was new to me as well. And um, it's a huge part of my mental game today. What, what are a couple of tools that, you, that, that Ty has helped you with that you've really, that, that have sort of uh, sat with you that you use to, to try and get yourself, block out the competition and just focus on you, I guess, in your run? Um, more so than my run, probably I would have to say just staying in the game, staying focused. Um, preparation is one, staying prepared, er, doing everything I can do to be prepared for, to win, taking care of my horses, keeping them healthy, myself, um, just being ready and prepared. And then two, focusing on what I have control over. That's been a game changer because you can get outside of it thinking, well, what if, or they felt like this, or they've done this, or it's rained or whatever it is that's all outside of my control so to bring myself back to what do i have control over and that's keeping my horse feeling good focusing on what i need to do to put myself in a position to do good so ty what what are some examples or what's an exercise for that we could do maybe to to block that out and just worry or not well just be just do <laughs> yeah, worry not worry. <laughs> just do what um you know what we can control yeah. So, yeah, that's a great question and, and to just build off of what she's saying. So when you try to learn, so it's, it's learning to focus. Focusing is a mental skill that's trainable. We don't just have focus. We don't just have the ability to think about that one thing or to fixate on that one thing. It has to be developed and it has to be trained. 
So focus though, what's cool about focus is there's broad focus, like focusing on the things that are within your control and influence. And then there's narrow focus, like, uh, you know, if, if your hands need to be in a certain way or you need to look at a certain spot or whatever. So there's broad and there's narrow. So either way, you try to develop it the same way. And it starts, um, you kind of have to go a little bit before that. And before you can really develop focus, you actually have to train awareness. And when I say awareness, I mean awareness that right here, right now, in this moment, as we sit here or on the back of the horse or wherever, in that moment, we have the opportunity to choose a deliberate response. Whatever it is that we want to do, whether it's an emotional response, it's what we want to focus on, whatever, it is a choice. But we spend so much of our time like in just autopilot. We're just mindlessly being directed by what's going on and just reacting. So we need to have the awareness that right here, right now, I actually get to choose what I'm going to focus on. It's within my power to do it. And uh, so then you start with that. Then from there, there's certain things. So like as Stevie's talking about from a broad perspective, let's say just focusing on what's within our control. Um, really, that's one thing. It's us and our response. <laughs> that is really the only thing that we can control. Now, we have things that we have influence over. Those are horses. Those are other people. Those are whatever. So we can influence them. Do we ever control them? No, they have a mind. Anything that has a mind of its own, you will never have full yeah. control over. So we have to understand that. But like what Stevie's saying is we need to be able to be prepared and, and really identify what we control and what we influence. And so what we do with that is we have to just continuously remind ourselves. We have to, it's like self-talk. That's another mental skill. And we always have to be aware of what's happening and be able to remind ourselves through self-talk of what's within my control and every time you recognize that you're off base and you bring it back that's, that's, that's when the skill. skills getting sharpened yeah. up every yeah, single time for sure so that's how that works can i touch Absolutely. on that yeah. Yeah. so awareness going back to awareness i feel like i get asked all the time well i black out what do you do i black out in the alley i black out in my run i don't think through it so I always get asked, well, how did you train yourself to do that? So going, this is, yeah. I, I feel this is a great topic to share because when I first started training and perfecting that in my mind, I had to talk myself through it over. My attention span is very short. Mm -hmm. I get squirreled all the time. Big surprise, I know. So in the beginning, which I still do have to do this, but in the very beginning, it was going back to it over and over and over again, telling myself, going down the alley, telling myself going to the first barrel, telling myself turn, even turning a barrel, like just talking myself through, and I guess that's more self-talk. But going back to awareness, you have to have awareness of where you're focused and what you're thinking about and when. And I feel like in the beginning it was so, it, it almost got me to the point where I was getting too intense about it. Right. So I feel like you're gonna know when you're at that point to move from that and habit and muscle memory starts taking over. So you don't have to talk yourself through it quite so much and so intense, but I feel like going back to awareness is a good place to start with that. Being aware, if you're blacking out in the alley, okay, you remember the first barrel, but you don't remember anything after, I'm saying barrel racing, because that's, no, that's all I can that's correlate that's to. That's the idea, so, yeah. you know, where you're losing that focus, bringing awareness to it in your run. But what a lot of people, girls don't think about is when you're practicing, when you're exhibitioning, when you're sitting at home, go through it mentally, go through it over and over and over again. It's not just when you're making a run. They want to just practice it when they make a run. Yeah. So that's, that was, that's a good point. So do you write down maybe in bullet points so you can get clarity? You might say, okay, this is the, these are the five points I want to bring my mind yes, to is it yes. so you might say okay first barrel or whatever or first cow or yes. first raining spin so you you do that and then do you go yes. through that in your head in the alleyway yes and for me riding so many different horses i have to keep track and i could do a little better of writing stuff down he's on me all the time write stuff down but i have gotten better to write at least certain words down for each horse right. that's going to help me whether it's drive by or relax or whatever those words are for you in your run um 
figure that out for you because everybody's different. What works for me may be a different word or words for you. Um, so that helps, you know, having a specific game plan and routine for each horse and each run. Well, when I go really fast, this happens. Okay, when you go slow, breaking it down too, when you go slow versus fast. So holding it all together mentally and words for what you need for each horse for each run, you know, it gets a little confusing and overwhelming. But writing it down, keeping it simple, sounds silly, but it is very important. It's not silly at all. Um, very important. I remember reading a book. Uh, by Maxwell Maltz and, uh, and Psycho-Cybernetics. Psycho-Cybernetics. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what really helped me with one situation was, and, uh, is awareness the same as becoming present, do you think? Or is, I, aware, is awareness more awareness of where's your mind? Is that what, yes, what you're saying, Stevie? What am I thinking? Yeah, right awareness, now? staying present to me is... I think it's related. But it feels the same. Yeah. It does. It can. It can be the same, but I don't think it is always the same because when I say awareness, the other thing I can um, is it's not just about aware of where I am right here, right now. It can also be aware of this is my typical response in a situation mm -hmm. like um, this is typically what I think about or whatever. So it it's related, but I don't feel it's the same. Okay. But but being present is also another mental skill. Mm -hmm. It is though for me, uh, when I was doing my little bit of rodeoing, I retired unhurt and unheard of, <laughs> just for the public, okay? But, but when I did, um, it, it becoming, what I got from, from his book was how to become present, was to feel the bucking shoots, mm -hmm. and how cold the steel was, yeah. and then feel is the horse hot, um, is he soft? Feel the leather as you're putting the halter on. And, and that, that helped me so much mm -hmm. because yes. it made me become present in that situation. Absolutely. Um, and breathing, obviously. And it, it actually changed me nearly overnight. Wow. Where it just, it made me just focus. I forgot about the crowd or whoever. It just made, okay, I'm going to feel, yeah. maybe with the cutting, feel your saddle, feel mm -hmm. your horse, feel your reins. Yep. Just become present. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but then, yeah, as you mm -hmm. say, your mind wants to dart off and, 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 yeah. and, and go away. So is, is that because, Ty, the, the mind is so, it loves negativity. I mean, the mind just loves to thrive off negativ negativity, doesn't it? So it just yeah. wants to take you to the negative thoughts. So, yeah, I mean, that can be, you know, it's by nature, a lot of, of us are more pessimistic than optimistic, <laughs> for sure. However, I feel that the mind left untrained is whether it's positive you know thinking about positive or negative things it's just it's untrained it's like i've heard people say it's like mm -hmm. a drunk monkey you know <laughs> that that just does whatever mm -hmm. until we try to put some boundaries around it so it isn't it's not like we ever have everything buttoned up and zipped up all the time mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is train it to have certain times where we say monkey sit in this chair and be quiet <laughs> for the next 10 minutes and then you can get up and do whatever yeah. you know so we can't expect it to be perfect all the time but um so that's just all of us like we we're yeah. not born oh no i still deal with a lot of that i mean i have to gather my focus yeah. and and what you were talking about feeling and seeing and yeah. it slows you down yes. to be present and yeah. to be aware because we get so scattered with so many thoughts and uh, I feel like that just slows it down to be able to focus really on what you need to focus on. Well, it, can I add to that? Yeah. Because it, I don't want to move on from that because it's really cool that you said that because that is, okay, so in that context that you describe being in the present, that is absolute awareness. And so that's really cool because in the present moment is where the high performance happens, right here. It doesn't happen in the future and it absolutely doesn't happen in the past. You know, it's right here, right now. So when you are paying attention to those things, it is absolutely bringing you right here, right now. The other cool thing about it is, is now it's directing your focus on some of these other things. And what you're not thinking about now is what's at stake. What someone's going to think about you, how ranked this horse is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. how bad these cattle are. You're at the end of your set or whatever. And, you know, you think that you might potentially just not even have a chance or, or it's the fraternity and, you know, there's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot of expectations. So that awareness of feeling the saddle, feeling the stirrups, smelling, hearing, whatever it is, 
it keeps you from thinking about that. So it's almost like a good distraction. And the yeah. key 